Okay, well, I figured since it's been uh, a year since I got the MK3, we can talk about uh, upgrades, modifications, stuff like that, what I think, after about a year. The latest mod that I've done is to put the uh, spool feed, as you can see, in line with the head so that it, uh, no matter where the head goes, it's always pulling in line. When it was back there, you could hop off the rail. If, if you didn't, if you kept the hub directly in the center, it wasn't too big of a problem. But if you keep your hub directly in the center with that clip on and you're doing a full height print, it hits there and it buggers up the top of the print. So it's just, it's just time to be more logical about it and just put the whole thing in line. And it uh, literally took like 10 minutes to uh, throw this thing together. It's just a, I took a, a 12 inch long piece of aluminum bar that I had laying out in the shop and drilled three holes in it. I drilled two holes down here. They're 43 millimeters apart and used screws that came with the printer, extra screws, and there's already holes tapped and threaded in the frame. So just bolted that on. And I drilled one screw up here to stick any bolt in that you want. In this case, I had a, a quarter inch bolt that was more than long enough. I could definitely get a shorter bolt. But uh, super easy fix, makes everything a lot better. But um, let's get down to it. Let's see, way back when you first got it, the first mods were all from uh, Persa. And the first ones that came out is they were trying to solve the skipping step problem they were having. And they suggested removing the, uh, the filament that they had in both the beds and put, going to a cloth uh, wrap, which I did. And in my case, I even went to some better uh, silicone, high current, super flexible wire for the heat bed. But uh, you should, if you have an older machine and haven't done it, you should do that. It just makes it a lot easier for the machine to operate. It gets rid of a bunch of a drag and there's just no chance you're going to have a missing or skipped uh, step on your motors in either the Z X or the Y. Uh, what else? The next mods that came all again were from Persa and they were trying to cure part of the problem with cooling on their new hot end design which is almost an all metal hot end it's, it kind of is kind of isn't anyway they improve the cooling by having you print all new body parts and everything and improve the cooling on the print thing by changing the angle of the fan and, and the size of the duct and if you haven't printed those new parts you can find them on the Purser website you definitely should they uh, both help quite a bit I'm definitely in favor of those. Uh, other mods, let's see. Well, probably my f my favorite mod would be the one that I put up just recently, is where I designed this tray, which snaps into the bottom of the frame. Because right now I can just grab this whole thing up here and unplug it and, and get it out of the kitchen if the wife doesn't want it in here. She's got Gus coming over. She's doing something. And it makes everything portable because it just takes all my cards and tools and everything with it and I'm, I'm out of there. So I love that mod. And of course, uh, my filament disposal meter. Uh, I don't care whether you've got a filament disposal meter or just the little uh, moving weather vane things or whatever you want to call it. It is good to be able to see the, the, the stepper motor that's running your extruder. Um, it's helps you figure out when things aren't going right. One thing that I've noticed that has came up, I'm going to grab a nightlight I've got over here. As you can see this nightlight has an arc. Something that's come up in the past few months, because I always do all of the Prusa updates, and the machine never used to have any stringy, stringy issues at all. But I've noticed that recently, if you print a part like this, the machine will get stringing from this side to this side on the back. And it's real easy to remove and everything, but my point is it, it didn't used to be there. So initially I was thinking, well, maybe I've, maybe I've worn out the tip. So I put on the spare tip, stringing was still there. And I went, well, maybe it's the filament I'm using. So I brought in the uh, TiVo flash that I've got, took the filament off this machine, put the same filament on the TiVo flash, took the same STL file that I was had been running here, Resliced it in Cura for the flash, obviously, and printed it there, no stringing. The TiVo flash did it perfect and beautiful, just the way this machine used to. So I don't know quite what's changed either in their firmware or 
in their software because I do use the, the Persa uh, Slick 3 slicing program and I do keep my machine updated. In fact, there were just updates two days ago. So something has been modified there. Uh, one thing I did to try to reduce the string, it doesn't get rid of it, but it definitely reduces it, is that I went in and I changed the profile so that after it does the first layer, which it does at 215 when you're printing PLA, I then have it kick back to uh, 200. And that helps get rid of some of the string. What else? Oh, well, this is one of my favorite uh, things that I did too. If you go back through my channel, besides the tray and besides the filament disposal meter, the uh, dimmer switch and off. I put a three position switch on here that has a center off or I have the high bright or I have the, the dimmer and basically I, that's been real important to not light up this kitchen all night long when it's running and make things easier. I just leave it in the dim mode. It's perfectly re readable in the daylight and perfectly readable at night and it's not so intense. So I, I love that mod. Love that. Love that. What else do we want to talk about? Oh, at one point I experimented with putting in the stepper dampeners, the, the metal things, the isolations, just to see what would happen. Because you can see I'm printing on this big uh, kitchen island. This whole thing acts just like a big sounding board, and this just hangs off in space. It basically amplifies any sound you make is going to be amplified. And so adding those actually did make a difference. And they're so cheap, you know, you can get them for a buck or two these days that there was no reason not to slap those on there. I ended up putting them on all the motors all the way around. I, it's definitely not necessary, but it definitely did not hurt anything. Everything uh, worked and still works. Anything else? The machine has held up really well. It's been a go-to machine. Um, the only other mod, since I've never been able to get the, uh, the uh, powder-coated PEI sheet that they promised when we bought them, haven't heard shit. I went ahead and put a build tack on the other side of this so I can actually flip this magnetic sheet over and if I'm having a particular problem getting things to stick I can print on the build tack side and of course then I do have to go into my LIZ of just and readjust because the build tack is thicker than the PEI so they're, they're slightly different settings. But for the most part, I don't have any problem at all printing on the, the PEI. It's, it works well. And if things aren't sticking perfectly fine, then a little bit of glue stick will hold them down. So, and if you're printing uh, PETG, then definitely put glue stick down so that they don't stick too well, because you won't be able to get them up without ruining the PEI sheet. Everything else about the machine is held up. Everything else about the machine is, is very good. Uh, the power out resume works really well. We have had, uh, I used to have sitting right here, a large UPS tower backup power supply. I no longer need it. We've had quite a few power outages and this thing has resumed every time. Seems like way back in the beginning you had to tell it to resume, but these days when there's an outage and it comes back on, it just warms everything up and just automatically resumes and goes right back into the printing. Works really, really quite well. Uh, can't think of anything else. You all know the print quality is good on the machines. Definitely not the cheapest machine out there, but it's definitely one of the most reliable. Consistent. It's a go-to machine. If you just need to get work done, it's going to get the job done. Oh, the other mod I did is on the, uh, the bearings on the bottom. You can probably see them there. I decided to go ahead and try uh, some bushings that are more like um, Ultimaker uses and a few other printers just to see how it worked. And I happened to find on eBay at one time some that had exactly the same outside dimensions as the uh, old rattle trap bearings that come with this thing. And it's, uh, it helped a lot. It really did help quiet things down and it definitely got rid of any slop at all. So. I'll probably never go back to the ULM, whatever the number is on those uh, bearings that were on the rod bearings that were there, because these have been running almost the whole time I've had it. No complaints there. And of course, before I had this MK3, I had the MK2, and I got it way back when it first came out. So I've been buying their machines for a while and loving them. It was uh, definitely a go to machine. The only reason I even upgraded from the MK2, because I knew the print quality wasn't really going to get any better, was I wanted the removable bed. 
Um, there was something else that I wanted. Oh, I wanted the power resume and the removal bed and the filament uh, runout sensor. Those things were kind of important so I could just leave a machine run and not uh, have to babysit it so much. This is the main reason I upgraded. But other than that, an MK2 is just fine. Very good machine. I think that's about it. All I wanted to say is after a year, I'm still very happy with it. Still a very good machine. My favorite upgrades are going to be the snap in tool tray, filament disposal, and definitely the inline filament feed. And yes, I could have designed this as a 3D printed part, but it, it was just stupid to design this as a 3D printed part because this literally took 10 minutes to drill the three holes and bolt it on there versus all the time it would take to CAD out one that holds it straight and then all the time they're going to take you to print it plus all the plastic. It, it didn't make sense on something this simple, something that just bolts on and goes straight up with a, a bolt coming out of it, you know what I mean? So there you have it.